you know that this right here for what? How you doing guys, Brandon here. Welcome to Retro Dodo. Thank you for checking out this video. We've had the Retro CM3 handheld in our office for around about three to four weeks now and we think it's about time we gave you guys a review. Now we were going to do an unboxing when this came in but when we ordered it, it literally came in just bubble wrap. So unboxing it in just bubble wrap and then trying to let you know, it was just a long process. So I thought I'd do a three to four week review and this is basically it. So this is the Retro CM3 handheld, a Raspberry Pi handheld that costs around about $150 to $200. So it is very, very expensive up there towards the Nintendo Switch Lite price, which is kind of mad. And, and I'll, I'll say this straight off the bat, it's an overpriced handheld, um, but it is good. So here it is. This is the Retro CM3 and it's running off a... CM3 Lite module Raspberry Pi. So it is quite powerful and it allows you to run PlayStation 1 games. So for those of you that there that are looking for a PS1 handheld that can run very, very smoothly, this might be for you. And that's basically why you're paying for that high-end price because a lot on the market can't run PS1 uh, ROMs very smoothly, but this can and it can run it bloody damn well. So here it is. We, I wrote a review on it on our site about a week ago and I gave it a 7 out of 10 for many of reasons and one of the, the major issues in my opinion was the build quality. Now admittedly this is injection molded uh, so the case is custom made but it, like in my opinion the, the quality of the build and you know the, the hardware doesn't match the emulation quality. The emulation quality is superb, but we, like what you're seeing now, so this is, the, uh, this is the front of the handheld, you've got the top there. On the front you have a 3.2 inch IPS screen with a resolution of 480 by 320. You've got your standard D-pad and your A, B, X, Y buttons, which are kind of, you know, they're kind of nice. The D-pad is a little sharp. Inside you get a 3500 milliamp battery and they reckon you can get six hours game time out of this. It's more like four. Um, so don't get your hopes up. Uh, I don't know why they did say six hours. I tested this twice and uh, you know, it's it's definitely more towards the four hours region. So it does come pre-installed with RetroPie, which means you basically have all of your emulators pre-installed straight out of the box. So if you want to install your ROMs, it's quite easy. So. Let me turn up the brightness here. So yeah, unfortunately that is as bright as it goes. But taking a look around, you've got your on off button. And for those of you that are interested, it takes a good 20 to 30 seconds to load up uh, when you turn it on. So it, it is a pick up and play, but if you want to turn it on, you're gonna have to wait around for a little bit to get into the actual RetroPie um, user interface. You've got a micro USB at the bottom. I would have liked USB-C just because you get your headphone jack and then you get your TF card slot. And as you can tell, there's no volume wheel on here either, or even a brightness up and down. You have to go into the settings for that, which is kind of annoying. You know, adding a volume rocker or a volume wheel on here isn't the hardest thing to do. So you can already see that they're trying to cut down on some, um, you know, um, their budget, let's say. And uh, the, the worst thing I think about the face of this is the analog stick. The analog stick is incredibly low quality, almost like I could, you know, just pick it off. It's incredibly thin. They didn't even add a rubber cap on it. Uh, I think adding a rubber cap on it would have been quite nice and to match the gray would have been very good. Um, admittedly, you can buy your own rubber cap, but I don't think you should need to do that when you're paying $150 for a handheld. So, you know, like having having a bit of rubber on the analog stick would have been perfect. And I know some of you would have liked two analog sticks, but in reality, you're not gonna be playing many games with two analog sticks. One is just fine. If you do really need to, then you're gonna to need to pay a bit more money. On the top here, you get your trigger buttons. You know, they're actually quite nice. I, uh, they've done a good job there, but like the whole, the shell, the plastic used on the shell is really, really low quality. Like it's, it, it, I feel like if I squeeze this hard or like, you know, pulled this, it could, it could definitely snap. And for $150, I would have liked something a bit more sturdier, you know? There's nothing on the back, it's just holes and grills. Looks quite 
plain in my opinion. Now I know a lot of you will say that I'm being a bit brutal because it's a it's a Raspberry Pi handheld and you know no real company is selling them where these guys are. This is a company behind this selling this and uh, I don't know I just think for $150-$200 a better shell would have been, you know, a lot nicer. And even the lens over the screen is plastic. It's it's not even glass now. So that that's a bit of a shame. So the build quality, I'm not a fan of, but because it's this horizontal design, it's actually quite comfortable as well. Admittedly, there's not much curvature on the handheld, but you can play for a long period of time, up to four hours on one charge. Uh, and it's quite nice. You can get to the triggers. The buttons are nice. The analog stick is, you know, it's... It's perfect. So let's jump into the emulation. I know a lot of you will want to see this. Um, you, you know, straight out of the box, it is playable, which I really do like. In companies that don't do that, are you know, they're definitely losing out on on customers, shall we say? So you can change the uh, the menu and stuff, which is quite nice. I've got like this switch design. So some of the emulators which it can play are Atari, Lynx. Uh, Capcom, um, you know, Disc System, Game & Watch, Game Gear, Game Boy Original, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, May, Master System, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, Neo Geo, uh, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Poke Mini, PSP, PlayStation 1, and so on and so on, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, you know, there, there's there's plenty on here for you to play and uh, it's quite nice and it can play most of these very, very well. So, into like all I can say is that emulation works absolutely great on here and the only way I can prove it to you is by playing these games. So what I'm going to do is take 30 seconds on a handful of emulators and you can just watch me play and kind of review it for yourself. I think that's the best way to do these reviews. A lot of the times I'll be playing and just keep saying, yeah, it's good, it's good. So I think this time, I'm just gonna play them and you can take a look at the gameplay to see your thoughts. But in my opinion, runs it all great. So let's jump in straight in because I know a lot of you are Game Boy fans. Let's jump in with a Game Boy Advance emulator and then every 30 seconds will change to a different game. So there are timestamps below if you wanna see certain uh, consoles. So let's jump right in with a Game Boy Advance game. Okay, should we try the Nintendo 64? Let's see if it can play this. I know a lot of you will be uh, excited to see the gameplay on this. Um, should we go Donkey Kong 64, a classic? Can you see, you can see this, right? Having some issues here with Donkey Kong on N64. It's just jumping mad frames. It could be a dodgy ROM. This is the first time I played Donkey Kong. But, uh, you know, N64 emulation on the thing isn't the best. Let's try, should we try Mario Kart 64? Like, I know a lot of you, if you did want an N64 emulator, you probably want to play Mario Kart. So let's see how well this performs. Like, it's running semi smoothly on here. Because there's less buttons, I can't throw or use my mushrooms. So again, that's something you want to be aware of. So there you have a quick look at Mario Kart on the N64. Like, it's playing smoothly, playing great, without a doubt. Uh, looks good on the screen as well, but as you can see here, I have an item, and because of the lack of buttons, I just can't throw the item. Now, I know you can go into a lot more detail. You can go in and configure some of the buttons, but that's something you're gonna have to take into consideration. And doing that with every game is going to be a pain in the backside. So it can play N64 games, or some of them, shall we say, 
uh, but it does struggle with a couple of titles and the lack of, you know, have, having that many buttons can be uh, a downside of this handheld and having to configure them all all the time not for me i want to pick up and play and you know like some like the game boy one up xl which was the same price had those buttons plus it had usb ports so what you could do is hdmi out into your tv and then plug in usb um controllers to play on your screen where this you can it's just the handheld you know so again there's another downfall with a handheld of this price tag so there's a look at n64 mario kart runs really well so coming out of n64 shall we try like it's gonna run nez 100 percent but uh let's take a look because i know a few of you are big into your nez works with the analog sticks quite nice It can run NES perfectly fine. It doesn't take a lot of power to actually emulate NES, so I'm comfortable and I've used many of NES uh, ROMs before. It can run that perfectly. So let's take a look at the PS1 emulation. Now this is what the handheld raves on about and markets itself about is PS1 emulation. So let's take a look and see if it can do that. And you, the, you know, the, the way to test that is with the OG Crash Bandicoot. Whoops. And as you can tell by that gameplay, it's it's a hundred percent playing Crash Bandicoot and quite well, you know. No frame drops as I can see. Feedback on the buttons is quick. Actually, very very enjoyable. Should we try another game? Let's try a different game. As you can see there, I'm pretty damn awful at Tomb Raider, but it's running quite nicely, you know? On a small handheld like this, and the analog stick works. It uh, it works for a little treat if you're into your uh, PlayStation 1 games. So yeah, without doubt, this can play your PlayStation 1 ROMs. Now finally, one that I want to share with you, and that is PSP games. And, you know, they've only got two preloaded on here, which is Final Fantasy and Crisis Core. Uh, so I'm going to show you some gameplay of that.
So as you can see there, it's running Final Fantasy 3 quite well, and admittedly, this isn't a huge PSP game, and I have no PSP ROMs or bigger PSP ROMs like 3D games or big 3D games, for example, uh, to test. But I can imagine you won't get silky smooth frame rates on those big games, but smaller games like this, like Final Fantasy 3, I think you'll be just fine. And it's running really, really well. And, uh, you know, not bad. If you ask me, I was actually impressed when I started uh, testing PSP, these two games on this handheld, they actually started them and ran them uh, fairly well. Uh, just don't go crazy with the big games as I can't imagine it will run those silky smooth. So I'll turn back on the lights and uh, I'll give you an overall opinion of the, uh, the CM3 here. Like, it's a very powerful handheld, don't get me wrong. Like, this thing is packed uh, with the Raspberry Pi. It's got a nice three-inch screen. It can run most of your ROMs, including N64 and PS1, which makes it a great little handheld. It's just the fact that the build quality isn't the best, and for $150 to buy something off AliExpress and it comes bubble-wrapped, is you know it's it's a little bit stingy in my opinion no volume rocker i would have liked two extra buttons to play all of the actual games um but you know it deep down it comes to what you want if you're happy to pay 150 to 200 dollars for a small handheld that can play ps1 and n64 roms then go for it the n64 and some other controllers within the consoles and emulators might need configuring if you've got some empty buttons um that isn't the end of the world but it would have been nice for them to add on you know extra buttons uh you know four uh shoulder buttons and maybe an extra analog stick and a volume rocker or wheel while they were at it so the build quality does really give it a downfall you know, but the speaker is semi-loud. If it's comfortable, it can last up to four hours on one charge, powering uh, the bigger emulators, and it's easy to use in terms of pick up and play. And if you're lucky, it will come preloaded with a ton of ROM. So overall, guys, it is a cracking handheld. It can play your N64 and PS1 ROMs. Just don't be blown away with the build quality and. In all honesty, I'm seeing a lot of Chinese handhelds coming out over the next year that will be half of this price and that can do just that as what this can, N64 and PS1. So if you can't wait, definitely pick one up. If you wanna wait six months, I can see a very cheap handheld under the $100 mark, maybe towards the 80 that can play N64 and PS1 ROMs. The Retro Game 350 isn't far off. Uh, but it does lack N64 emulation. So overall, I'd give this a 7, 8 out of 10. Uh, great, great, powerful handheld that can play all of your ROMs, but just lacks build quality. So there you have it, guys. A quick review, overlook of the N64 PS1 handheld called the Retro CM3. Not too shabby, just the build quality, not too good. And that, that analog stick is, you know, it's, it's disgusting. Not good at all. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this handheld review. Make sure to come back and subscribe to see more videos and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.